Hello, I'm Robert and welcome to my channel where I talk about everything automated algorithmic trading or simply algo trading. Today we're going to talk some more about the demo account for my USD Canadian pair where we're going to actually go through and show what this looks like on a bigger scale. So let's get straight into the video. We have the logs from the bot that I've been running for the last couple of months, where we need to define a few critical points so that as we progress through the video, it'll make more sense. So let's start with a closed trade. Anytime you have a sell or a stop loss, when you close out every single unit of that trade, it can either be a closed or completed trade. It's done. Every time you reduce a position by one unit, you're not closing it out completely. This is important as we discuss exactly how many trades I've taken. Because I measure my total number of completed trades, not the total number of trades. Now this particular bot is set up to reduce every time it completes a trade. So let's actually look at the statistics of the bot itself. So right now we have completed 5,263 trades. That is, these are either sells or stop losses. The reduction count is actually not included in this number. If we count the reduction, then the bot itself has played, has placed over 10,000 trades. And we can see each month of its current profits with December being at $106 profitability. Now this is not an overly aggressive bot, but it's not an overly defensive bot. This bot is a comfortable level, and it's done very well. Here is the current configuration I am using with it, and this does use only the version 2 bot. You'll see that my deviations are just whatever the spread is. So my average spread for USD Canadian is typically two to three pips. And then from there, I'm using the four thirds rule to describe how I take my profit. So if I have three pips for my spread, my profit is going to be roughly five pips. I have 123 levels to the grid and I have reduction of one unit every time I sell a profitable trade. Now I'm using only 40% of my margin because I want 10% to be for stop losses. So as we progress through this and we see 5,263 trades. How do we actually visualize that? Can we even visualize that? Especially with the reductions and how those reductions really take place. Well, that has been one of the things I have been working on as a part of the entire version 2 framework. One of the biggest issues that even led me to developing version 2 was needing to be able to actually see better what was going on. So from the prospect of trying to put all of this data into pretty little pictures, being able to actually visualize it in a meaningful way, led me down this rabbit hole where I spent the last several months blowing my computer up simply because I had so much data to collate and cross-reference. 
and it really was a challenge. Harkening back to one of my previous videos where I talked about that, you begin to see just how difficult it is to measure how much data you have versus what you might need. And you always have enough data until that moment that you don't. And then it's a matter of figuring out how do you get the data you need. So we look at the prospects of what we need in the future. Part of this rabbit hole was what you see in front of you. Well, I originally intended on this being nothing more than a teaching tool where I could demonstrate some of the more interesting details of the floating grid. After building it and spending excessive amount of time testing it and refining it, I began to realize that its value is far more than just teaching. So let's get into this chart and talk about some of the more grittier details of, of it and what it actually means. I made this an extremely simple context. All green lines are where you've made money. All red lines are where you have lost money. So we have a take profit, a stop loss. All cyan or light blue lines, those are the reductions. So in looking at this chart, it displays all 5,000 plus completed or closed trades. But equally, you also see all 5,000 reductions. So let's actually begin scaling this out a little bit. And part of that process that I need to bring your attention is these areas here that are kind of long stretches or vertical lines, those are weekends and holidays. So this is a weekend and a holiday, but this is not, as you see, active trading going on. So now let's zoom out. And look at this. Okay, let's go right here. Here is another weekend holiday in between these two blocks. Now what you actually see or what is beginning to take shape is the actual formation of the grid. You are seeing exactly how the market behaved throughout this period. And then we have the weekend and you see the beginning of the next week where the market moved down and then the correlation of that week throughout its grid and you see the ups and downs of the grids and here we have another weekend and a holiday you can see because there's no fluctuations at the top so right here you're looking at one two four weeks roughly of trading in terms of just how this worked out. And the thing to take away from this is the more vertical the line, the less time you held it. For example, if we take a look here, we see some vertical lines that were only just a few seconds to a few minutes, whereas we see some slightly longer vertical lines that could be hours or even a couple of days. So that really is just a tip of what we see in this data. So let's move to the next region where we see just how much the market moved. And you begin to realize the back and forth motion of the grid and the reductions where the oldest entry gets reduced. So we see just how critical visually the reductions take place and just how important they are to the overall success of this particular strategy. As we saw from the numbers, the actual profits, 
these reductions have a major and significant role. And that role complements the entire process. So let's go through and look at more. Okay, now we see here with this side. This is a weekend. So let's see if we can get just this week. All right. So we have a weekend here and we have a weekend here. So basically you're looking at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of the week. So as soon as I figure out where my mouse went. Okay, this would be Friday. So we can actually see how in one week period, the market started high and it began going down into a lower radius. We could also see the volatility. And we could see, for example, the Tuesday volatility of this week. Very sharp vertical descents as the market just plummeted and the positions all sold off in a profit. Then we see some sideways motion a little bit, but the market still continued to drop. But then we see a huge bearish run, and the market climbed and then began to drop. So you can see the dynamics of the actual grids, and that really is the critical point of what you are looking at. And you see at each stage, the reductions constantly in the background on every single one of these trades, having an impact on the oldest entry, slowly eating away the bottom of the grid. And here we're looking at roughly two weeks of time. And you can see again, more volatility, more market movement. We could see where we reached an all-time high up here for this particular period, and then the price pummeled downward, selling everything off rapidly. So as we continue looking through the chart, you see just how the market clustered, how it coagulated, and then how it continued its downward descent. Now, what happens when this market decides to go into an upward descent? Well, that's where you're going to see more red, because if it goes past its layering, you're going to get stop losses. But here you can actually see where, again, it just pummeled down quicker. So we can clearly see, if I stop losing my mouse, clearly see the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the weekend. So let's keep going and stretch it out even more. Here we see another cascading downward turn as the market just continued to fall. And it's reaching lower lows in the process. And we're beginning the next cycle. And you can see the sharp lines where price isn't being held very long. Positions are being sold very quickly. And we have a much larger two-week period. Which, of course, shows the more defined grid. How price accumulated within the grid the multiple times of sell-offs, and then finally how price dropped drastically. And it ended up moving downward at a very steep rate. And we see that steep rate right here, where it made even new lower lows. So in all of this, let's actually back out of the entire chart and look at this entire chart from the beginning to what we have right now as of this Friday. You're looking at 
roughly two months of data. This pair started October 29th or so. Well, basically, they believe October 25th. So we see clearly very distinct clusterizations. We see how the market is actually moving. That is, we actually see the range that price is fluctuating. We see supply and demand. And that is probably one of the most interesting aspects of this particular chart. Something that I really wasn't expecting when I made this for educational purposes. I really didn't think it would convey so much information. Because as you look at each section, here the bot was too aggressive, was taking on too many stop losses. This is the first month that it lost $21. I made an adjustment and then it started doing well. And you could see the impact of the reductions each time it makes a new lower low. So with every new lower low, you can see clearly how the reductions take into account a very critical pivoting point of the strategy itself. Now, will we see more losses in the future? Yes, we will. This has been in a clear downtrend long term, which leads us to right here, the very bottom of the market. But eventually the market's going to cycle back upwards and we're going to start seeing that impact. So as this tool continues to develop, and it is going to be put in the supplemental area and released with the grid bot itself, it will become even more capable of isolating and visualizing just what the market is doing in a way that floats. And that's the important part. Your bot has to float with the market. Here I've been lucky. The market has been going downwards. But at the beginning of this trend, we clearly see where the market was going upwards and the bot was too aggressive. It wasn't managing its resources appropriately. So don't underestimate the power of some of the tools you are given, even without pretty pictures like this. A demo account is a wonderful asset and needs to be maximized as much as possible. So as we continue to progress forward, take the time to study charts like this. Whatever information you can get your hands on to help you make informed decisions, study it. Take a clear and concise note on exactly what it really means. Because there's so much information here that you can make out of this data. From the volatility of the market to the depth of the market to just how little liquidity is in the market or how much liquidity is in the market just by seeing the size of the grid and seeing how the market is being demonstrated in a visual pattern meaning as you look at the top of these grids and you see just how quickly trading takes place. You can measure this as a part of the volatility, a part of the supply and demand chain of the market. And we can see on point with what you would expect with a December. Price is dropping, but more importantly, liquidity is shrinking because people are removing their money for the holidays. You can actually see that in the market. And that is probably one of the biggest surprises 
that I actually did not expect to see in this chart. To see so graphically just how the money left the market with the actual trading approach. So let me know if you have any questions. Share your thoughts. Thank you for watching and until next time.